Praise the Lord. And good morning to everybody. We welcome you to the program Handfuls of Purpose. And I am Pastor Brad Wright of His Light Ministries. Um, this morning my wife wasn't able to be here. Um, but praise God, hopefully next week she'll be back with us um, by my side. Uh, teaching the Word of God to everybody. So this morning just grab your coffee, grab your Word of God, and, and let's dive into uh, what the Word has for us this morning. Amen? Praise the Lord. Um, last week we dealt with the topic, um, the question really, uh, who was the Sadducees, the Pharisees, uh, the Zealots, and then of course uh, the Essenes. And these were all religious political groups as we taught last week that... Um, um, that rejected Jesus Christ for the most part as a whole. Um, and they wanted nothing more to do than to get rid of Jesus Christ. But we see from the Word of God that they failed in their, um, uh, of their mission of trying to get rid of Jesus because we know that um, his whole mission was to go to the cross. And then after he uh, laid down his life, uh, three days later he rose again, praise the Lord. And then he showed himself to the disciples for the next 40 days after his resurrection and to where the Lord then uh, uh, took Jesus and ascended him back to the right hand of the Father where on the day of Pentecost, uh, 50 days uh, after Passover, he would send back the Holy Spirit for you and me to be another teacher. Amen. But the question is, you know, those who tried to destroy Jesus, those that were of the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Zealots, and Scribes, did did Jesus um, have anybody that he commissioned that, you know, uh, any, uh, anything, anyone in particular that um, after he ascended to carry on the work of ministering and teaching the gospel? And actually he did. Um, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. So turn with your Bibles this morning and we'll just read this uh, passage. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And the Bible says, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers. And we want to discuss this morning, you know, who were these, uh, you know, in the church world we call this the, five, the fivefold ministry where, you know, um, there's apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, but the question that many people have, you know, what is the difference? Is there a difference between an apostle? Is there a big difference between a, a, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, and, and teacher? You know, you know, what is the role of each of these? Just as last week we went through those who were against Jesus Christ, the Sadducees, Pharisees, Zealots, and the Essenes, that we see here in the Word of God that God calls some um, to preach the Word that are for Jesus Christ, the evangelist, uh, uh, the prophet, the apostle, the, the pastor, the teacher, what we call the fivefold ministry. So this morning we want to get into this and we want to differentiate uh, between what is the difference between each one of these and what is their specific role um, in, in ministering the Word of God. But first of all, before we even get into that this morning, we have to understand something that the Bible says, and he gave. And that word he is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the church. And he is an active uh, head. And he is the one who actually calls those into ministry. You know, there's an old saying that there's three different kinds of callings when it comes to being a preacher. There's uh, self-called, there's man-called, and there's God-called. And those who are, what I say, are man-called... Uh, uh, th that's when a denomination, um, you know, says that you're to be the preacher or you need to be the leader or a denomination or a certain uh, group asks you to be a preacher when God hasn't called you. And that's what we call a man called preacher. There is self called preachers. A self called preacher is one who um, made the decision that the way he wants to live his life and the way he wants to earn a living is. Um, by being a reverend or being a minister. And, and, and when God really didn't call them, but that's just the role they've decided to go into. That's what we call self-call. But then there's those um, which are very few and different, which are actually God-called ministers or God-called preachers. And, and again, a God-called preacher is one who God has called. And, and many of the times, those who God calls, most of the world would think, 
You know, there's no way that he can be a preacher. Do you remember what his past life was? Do you remember what he used to be like? Um, but, you know, when God calls, not a self-called, not a man called, but when God calls somebody to preach the word of God, there will be a special anointing upon him uh, when he is ministering the word of God. And people, while, you know, man may not accept it, they will know that they've been in the presence of the Lord because God will always give a special anointing to those that he calls to minister his word. And again, there is five different kinds of preachers that we see in the word of God. There is what's called apostles. There are those what are called prophets. There are those what are called evangelists. There are some that God calls for pastors. And there's others that God calls for teachers. And each one of these uh, different preachers has a different role in the kingdom of God and, and the way they preach and the way the anointing works. Now, again, there isn't five different anointings. There's only one anointing um, that comes from the Lord uh, as he pours out the Holy Spirit upon uh, these people. But we have to understand that same anointing works differently um, for each one of these. And so, first of all, let's deal with apostles. What is an apostle? You know, when we think of an apostle, we think of somebody who's a, a, a missionary going overseas. We think of an apostle as somebody who is uh, um, what they call a church planner who goes around planning churches. Um, we think of an uh, apostle um, who has a large gathering. or um, and, and really, you know, while an apostle can work as a missionary, while an apostle um, can, you know, plan a church that... That's not what makes an apostle. An apostle who God calls is someone who God has given a special message for the entirety of the body of Christ, for the entirety of the church world. And, and let me give you an example. After Jesus ascended and the Holy Spirit was sent back, you know, the original disciples were, you know, God's apostles and they, and they were given a special message. Now, first of all, everybody would say, you know, who may have been watching the last year of the program would say, well, the special message was the message of the cross. And, that, and that's true. But we have to understand, you know, when the, the early church started out on the day of Pentecost, they didn't understand a lot about what Christ did at the cross. All they knew was that he was the son of God. Um, that he was placed in the hand of sinners and he laid down his life and he died. And three days later he rose again, he ascended back to the Father, and now the Holy Spirit had been poured out in a whole new dimension to them. And, and so they didn't know a vast knowledge of the message of the cross like we know it today. Um, but, you know, as the Apostle Paul would come along, he would instruct and he would teach on the, the, the message when it comes to salvation and sanctification. But really, um, before the time of the Apostle Paul, um, when it came to the first 20 years of the early church, because we have to understand the Apostle Paul um, didn't get introduced into the early church until 20 years after it was birthed on the day of Pentecost. So for the first 20 years, the special message that the, the disciples or the apostles of that day preached, the special message they was given was really the message of the resurrection. And for the first 20 years, that was the emphasis of their preaching, that Jesus rose from the dead. Now, I know someone asked, well, Pastor, I thought it was supposed to be all about um, preaching the message of the cross or preaching Christ and Him crucified. And, and yes, that is correct. But again, they didn't know um, the understanding of the message of the cross yet. And really, the, the first special message was given was the message of the resurrection. And this is the reason. Because, you know, they ha you have to understand, Israel rejected Christ. They didn't believe Israel as a nation as a whole, didn't want nothing to do with Jesus. They didn't believe that he was the Messiah. They didn't believe that uh, he was the Son of God. Um, and so the special message was that the, the apostles were first given, the early apostles, the, the 12 the disciples, after Jesus left and sent back the Holy Spirit, was the resurrection. And the reason that God gave that special message for the apostles of that day was to try to prove to the people and, and minister to the people that he really was the Son of God. Because you have to remember, they rejected Christ. Israel, the, the Israelites rejected Christ as Messiah. And so the special message that they gave them that after he ascended was to preach to them that he rose from the dead. 
that he was the Son of God, that he had the power to lay down his life and he had the power to pick it up. Because we have to understand, if we don't accept him for who he is, we'll never grasp the meaning and understanding of what he did for us at the cross. So before Paul could come along and, and, and teach Israel and the rest of the world about what Jesus did at the cross, we had to, they had to first accept him that he was the Son of God, accept him for who he was, the Word manifest in the flesh. And so the, the special message that was really given um, at the birth of the early church was the message of the resurrection. And that's why we see in the book of Acts, um, as they started going out and ministering, it says that they preached the resurrection and great signs and great wonders uh, uh, followed them, uh, confirming the Word that they were preaching. And again, the reason was that they was trying to show Israel that he was the Messiah, that he was the Son of God, that he was uh, the second Adam. He was the Word manifest in the flesh. Because we can't grasp and understand what he did at the cross before we first accept who he is. And, and the best way to prove who he is is by telling the people that, hey, he rose from the dead, that he is alive. He's He's, he's been glorified now. He's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and me. And so the early church, the, the apostles, were given a special message. The 12 disciples uh, minus uh, Judas, but then uh, they replaced him um, with another man. And, and they were the apostles that day. And the special message they were given. And an apostle always has a special message that will reform uh, the body of Christ that will reform the church world of that of the day, and so so early church, you know, Peter, James, John, their special message for the first twenty years that God gave them um, was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, but we have to understand the resurrection is not what took our paid our penalty of sin. It's not what took uh, broke the power of sin. It's not what paid for all the benefits. You know, it's, it was what Jesus did at the cross that did all of that. And so after the first 20 years, when they started proclaiming uh, the message that Jesus is alive, that he raised from the dead, that special message, and people started to accept him as the Messiah, as the Son of God, then Paul brought along another apostle, and that apostle would be Apostle Paul, who wrote about two-thirds of the New Testament. And his special message was what Jesus did at the cross. And as Paul started preaching this wonderful message, this special message of Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross for salvation, for sanctification, how the Holy Spirit works, it reformed uh, the church once again and it grew him closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and again, that's what an apostle does. An apostle always has a special message. Now, some would ask, are apostles still around today? And the answer is yes. God has raised up apostles throughout the ages um, to bring the church back to a truth, to bring the church back to uh, the benefits that was afforded at Calvary's cross, to bring the church back to where sin was taken care of, to bring the church back to where the power of sin was broken. And, and, and through the ages, God has always uh, uh, raised up apostles. And then again, at the turn of the century, um, in the 1900s, God raised up a brother Seymour um, who would go to California and he would start a church and, and God would give him a special message. And that special message was the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And his church was on a street called Azusa. And for many of the older generations or who have went to a Pentecostal or raised in a Pentecostal church, you probably heard of the Azusa Street Revival. Well, that's because God raised up an apostle, Brother Seymour, who was given a special message which touched the whole church world all around the world. And it brought the church back to a special, a, a precious truth about what Christ uh, paid for at the cross. And that was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And again, after that, in the 20s and 30s, God raised up uh, Brother Wigglesworth, Apostle Wigglesworth. And he touched the whole world, bringing a special message that the gifts of the Spirit... You know, the gifts of healing, the, the, the gift of prophecy, and, and all the nine gifts of the Spirit are still for today, and, and they are to be in operation. And I could go on and on with this, but, you know, when it comes to an apostle, an apostle has a special message. And, and a true apostle, a true apostle will have a special message given from the God um, that will bring people around Christ and what he did at the cross. And when... 
and when it is a true apostle and a true message, a true special message from the Lord, um, it, it'll touch the entire church world. It, it'll touch the entire body of Christ. And what it will do is it will reform the church world and it'll bring their faith and back to the focal point of what Jesus did at Calvary's cross. Praise the Lord. But that's what an apostle is. Now, and, and there's a, another uh Another one of the type of preacher, and that is what's called a prophet. Now, we read in the Old Testament all the time that God's sending a prophet. And really what the job of a prophet is, and, and the first thing we think of uh, with a prophet is somebody prophesying. Amen? But let me say this. When it comes to the office of a prophet... A prophet isn't so much should be known for his foretelling the future, as what many people think, and that's what a prophet is, that they foretell the future. And, and while a, a prophet can be used in the gift of prophecy, that's not what makes somebody a prophet. A prophet should be known for him being foretelling and not foretelling. Let me say that again. A, the, a true office of the prophet is not about somebody... Um, foretelling uh, futuristic events. While, you know, and a prophet can be used in the gift of prophecy, that's not what a prophet should be known for. A true prophet um, that is sent by the Lord will be known for his uh, foretelling. In other words, his word that he gives, thus saith the Lord. And, and many of the times, God sends a prophet when it comes to giving a warning to the church um, and, and let me put it this way, when the church world starts going down a wrong road or they start going down uh, the wrong direction and they find themselves drifting away um, from Christ, true faith in Christ and what he did at the cross, that's when God will normally send in a prophet. And that's why many people don't like um, the prophets in the Bible. And if you notice in the Bible, the prophets were stoned, they were killed, um, because many of the times the message that they give a prophet is a message of warning, uh, a message of repentance, trying to tell the church world to come back to um, faith in Christ and what he did at the cross. And so a prophet is known as, is known as a preacher, and let me put it this way. The best way I can explain it is a prophet is known as being a preacher of righteousness, one who is um, has a special anointing really to preach against sin and try to direct the church back onto a right path of faith in Christ and what he did at the cross. Now, unfortunately, many people don't like um, what prophets have to say, true prophets of God have to say, because again, a prophet is a preacher of righteousness. And, 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 and their message is uh, forthtelling. In other words, they are stern. It, it'll come across. Now, some people think that, you know, prophets are known for preaching gloom and doom. A, a, in the Word of God, a true prophet of the Lord never preaches a message of gloom and doom. Now, that doesn't mean there won't be a warning attached, but a, a message of gloom and doom is when um, somebody tells you that there's no hope for you, there's no chance for repentance, and you're done, that's it. And the prophets never did that. Even in the Old Testament, they never did that. Now, they may have given a stern warning and told the people, hey, this is the judgment that's going to happen, but they would always give a way out. You know, the Bible says that even in God's fierce anger, his hand is still reached out. And so when a prophet truly was preaching righteousness and preaching against sin and, and may have prophesied the coming judgment that was going to happen if they didn't repent, yet, you know, even in the midst of that judgment being proclaimed, he always gave them a way of escape and he would always tell them unless you repent and come back we see that with the city of Nineveh um, with Jonah Jonah goes in and he preaches a strong message to the Ninevites and he says hey God's gonna overthrow your city unless you repent and you know what they repented and they and they repented and turned to the Lord and God spared them so a true prophet never preaches gloom and doom while he may preach a warning while he may preach a, a message of righteousness and preach against sin and may even proclaim some kind of judgment that could happen, he always gives a way out. 
because there is always a way out for every single man, woman, boy, girl, child. There is always a way of escape from judgment, and that is through Christ and what he did at the cross. By turning from our wicked ways and by faith coming to him, knowing who he is and accepting that precious blood that was shed for you and me. Praise the Lord. But that is what the office of the prophet is. Again, an apostle gives a special message. A prophet is a preacher of righteousness who his main thrust and anointing is preaching against sin and preaching repentance and, and proclaiming that unless repentance is, is forthcoming, then judgment will happen. Amen. Because the Bible within itself is an ultimatum. You know, we either serve the Lord or we don't. It's either heaven or it's hell. Amen. And that's what a prophet is known for, being a preacher of righteousness and preaching against sin and proclaiming the uh, future judgment unless repentance um, is given unto the Lord. Amen. And then uh, thirdly, there is what's called an evangelist. Now, an evangelist is somebody who is has a special anointing to gather the har harvest. In other words, um, preach to the sinners and, and try to lead people to Jesus Christ. And they have a special anointing um, when it comes to the sinners and, and, and trying to bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ and trying to lead them to salvation. And, and, that's, uh, and, and we've seen many evangelists uh, throughout the years. I mean, we've seen uh, um, God use uh, men mightily in evangelism like uh, uh, but, uh, Brother Gr uh, Graham um, Brother Wilkerson, Brother Swagger, uh, I mean, these were all um, evangelists who were anointed by God and, and, and had a special message um, of salvation for the sinners and, and had a special anointing to gather the harvest and lead souls to Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's really what an evangelist uh, uh, position is. They, they are really a preacher of salvation, a preacher of the born-again experience, the, a preacher you know, of, of the love of God and trying to win souls uh, over to Christ. And, you know, in these last days, we truly need evangelists raised up uh, to go out and gather the harvest because time is running short, and it is a special office. Um, just like the apostle, just like the prophet, an evangelist uh, plays an important role. The, the Lord even tells the, the pastors to do the work of an evangelist because it's important that we go out and tell people about Jesus Christ. God has not, um, you know, kept us here and didn't just rapture us out the moment we got saved um, to just keep this message to ourselves. But, you know, he wants us to proclaim this message. And while all of us are to do the work of an evangelist, a true evangelist, will have a special anointing to be able to minister to hearts, to minister to lives, to bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, to win uh, the lost for the kingdom of God. Amen? And really, that is what uh, the office of an evangelist really is. To preach the message of the cross for salvation in such a powerful way um, that God will convict hearts and convict life lives and many will be led to the Lord Jesus Christ. And fourthly, the Bible says that he calls some to pastor. You know, and, and what is a pastor? Really, a, a pastor or um, another terminology, a shepherd is somebody who feeds sheep. And, and I like, it, like to put it this way that, you know, evangelist goes out and wins the lost. And once the lost are won over to Jesus Christ, it's the pastor's um, a, a role that God gives a special anointing to continually feed God's people with the truth so that they don't backslide, so that they don't get into false doctrine, so that they don't give up um, when the devil comes at them to try to tempt them, you know, because we need to continually be re-encouraged um, and, and continually hear about Jesus Christ and all the benefits that he did for us when he died at Calvary's cross and said it is finished. And that's really what the the role of a pastor is. The role of the pastor is to feed the sheep. The role of the pastor is to feed the people, to continually feed people, you know, who Jesus is, the bread of life, and what he did at the cross, and letting the Holy Spirit touch, them, continually, you know, comfort them and uplift them, and letting that living water flow through their soul and through their spirit. 
you know, just like in the physical, if we went without bread and water for over a week, you know, our bodies would starve and we would perish. You know, it's the same thing spiritually. Without being fed the living bread daily and without being fed the living water or drinking of that living water daily, you know, spiritually we will uh, starve. We will dehydrate and it's important that we continually hear about Christ and what he's done and continually let our souls feed on that bread of life and that living water. And, and really, that's what the job of a pastor is. That's what the special anointing of a pastor is, is to minister to those who are saved. Now, that doesn't mean that a sinner can't come into church and, and give their heart and life over to the Lord. But the church was really meant um, for believers to gather and be fed the gospel of Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross. That's what my job is as a pastor. You know, I've, you know I, just because I've gone overseas, I've done missionary trips, you know, some people say, oh, you're an apostle, you're a prophet, um, or you're an evangelist. Well, you know, while I may have evangelized, I have gone on missionary trips, you know, God didn't give me the special anointing of an apostle. He didn't give me the special anointing of a prophet. And, and while I have, you know, been used by God to lead some to, you know, to salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, my special anointing isn't, you know, being an evangelist, even though I've done the work of an evangelist. My special anointing God's given me is pastoring and, and touching hearts and touching lives. And that's, you know, when God calls you to that, not only does he give you the anointing, he gives you that heart's desire. And that's my heart's desire is seeing those who are sitting in the chairs and seeing those who are watching through the cameras, you know, growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. And I always love hearing the testimony. That's why the greatest joy to my heart as a pastor is, is whether we're in church and somebody stands up and testifies of what God has done and how they've grown or whether we receive the emails or the comments on how they're being blessed and how they're growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord because that's what a pastor's job is and that's what their heart's desire is to feed the sheep and watch them grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. And finally, you know, the fifth uh, uh, preacher there is that God anoints is what we know as teachers. Now, the first thing we think of is Sunday school teachers, but that's, but that's not really what it means on teachers. A, a teacher is somebody who can expound in the Word of God and really go in depth and what Christ has done at the cross and really explain what is being preached. And let me say that one more time. That's what the special anointing of a teacher is. Somebody who can um, do expository teaching on the Word of God. And, 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 a, and a teacher has a special anointing to bring across um, what Jesus did at the cross in such depth that it just touches your heart and it just touches your soul and spirit to a greater degree um, than anything. And those are the five, uh, that's the five-fold ministry that God has called to be a blessing onto the body of Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's all the time we have for today. God bless all of you. Jesus loves you.